hundreds of thousands of years ago, when the Appalachian Mountains already were old and weathered. Tallulah Gorge was new. A great fresh gash in the earth, fashioned by powerful forces of nature. Today, Tallulah Gorge is a place marked by contrast, a place where boulders seem tossed about like pebbles, where sheer rock walls plunge more than 600 feet to the river below, where quiet pools give way to raging waterfalls. From above, the size and scale of Tallulah Gorge are hard to comprehend. From end to end, the gorge stretches almost two miles. It is bordered at top and bottom by lakes and surrounded by mountains. At its widest point, the distance between its rims is nearly half a mile. Part of a large and complex geologic system, Tallulah Gorge sits on the edge of the Tallulah Dome, a massive formation created when solid rock was folded like paper and then folded again on top of itself. Then the Tallulah River began the relentless work of carving away the rock eroding the hard, resistant quartzite of the gorge to shape a canyon that is one of the largest in the eastern United States. On its way through the gorge, the Tallulah River drops more than 500 feet in less than a mile, creating a series of spectacular waterfalls. The first, near the head of the gorge, is Lador. Next is Tempesta. The tallest of Tallulah's falls is Hurricane. Downstream is Oceana, with its wild wall of water. The last of the falls is Bridal Veil. Small by comparison, Bridal Veil tumbles over a gentle slope of rock. About 40 miles north of the gorge, the Tallulah River begins its journey down through the mountains. Just above the gorge, the river widens and the water collects into Tallulah Lake, one of a string of lakes created by a series of dams along the Tallulah and Tugelo rivers. Built in the early 1900s by the Georgia Railway and Power Company, these lakes store water for six hydroelectric plants in North Georgia. From top to bottom, Tallulah Gorge contains at least eight distinct ecosystems. 
from the harsh, exposed rock cliffs near the top to the moist, protected bogs in the bottom of the gorge. These different natural communities provide a home for many kinds of songbirds, a number of reptiles and amphibians, a few hardy mammals, and a great variety of plants. Several endangered species live in Tallulah Gorge. One of these is the persistent trillium, a plant so rare it is found nowhere else. Like other endangered species, the persistent trillium is a barometer, an indicator, a species whose fate is closely connected with our own because how well it fares reflects the condition of our environment as a whole. seems to be measured differently in the gorge. Change comes slowly here, and the arrival of people is a relatively recent occurrence. Ancestors of the Native Americans we know as Cherokees probably were the first to discover Tallulah Gorge. The earliest white men, most likely, were Indian traders and soon after came settlers who found a wild and uncharted territory. But news of this great natural wonder swept across the land as surely and as steadily as the spread of people themselves. By the late 1800s, dozens of hotels and cottages had sprung up around the gorge. Passenger trains, running regular daily routes, opened up this once remote area, and crowds of tourists flocked to Tallulah Falls. But the natural wonders of Tallulah Gorge attracted more than just sightseers. Entrepreneurs and engineers looked at the raging waters and saw a marvelous opportunity. The growing town of Atlanta, 90 miles south, had an insatiable appetite for electricity. In one of the great engineering feats of its time, a dam constructed at the top of the gorge harnessed the water of the Tallulah River. In September of 1913, 12,000 kilowatts flowed out of the Tallulah Falls power plant and over the lines to Atlanta. With the water stopped and the railroads expanding, the tourists who once filled the little town of Tallulah Falls, began traveling further into the mountains. By 1921, a series of fires had wiped out virtually the entire town. It wasn't until 1970 that the crowds came once again to Tallulah Gorge. In July of that year, thousands of curious onlookers 
gathered to watch Carl Wallenda walk from rim to rim on a wire stretched high above the gorge. Today, for a few weekends each year, the thrill seekers come once again. Like Walenda, they come here to test their skills against the powers of nature. of the Tallulah River, set free for only a few hours at a time, offer an awesome display, a challenge to even the most expert of boaters. Most of the time, the river is quiet. Its mighty flow diverted to create electricity. But with or without the water, Tallulah Gorge is a special place. A natural wonder like no other in Georgia. From Lador to Oceana, from Hurricane Falls to Bridal Veil, from Tempesta to Horseshoe Bend, Tallulah Gorge is a place of waterfalls and towering rock walls, of mist in the morning and shadows in the afternoon, of grand vistas and subtle beauty. And whether there are kayakers here or rock climbers, or even builders of great dams. The forces that created this extraordinary canyon continue their work. The slow, steady work of moving mountains and carving riverbeds from stone. At Tallulah Gorge, we are reminded of our place in the natural world and it is the power of nature itself that inspires us.